woke up one day, decided, you know what? Anything is possible. So the answer is absolutely yes. Um, before she comes up, I just want to say she's going to do her talk. She's going to walk up, pick up her violin, and come back and play a couple pieces for you. So um, don't be alarmed. The talk's not over yet. So let's welcome Jennifer Zang to the stage. Thank you. Hello, is this working? Is this working? First time I had a headset. All right, um, so today's the first time I'm coming or talking publicly about a very uh, personal story of mine. So before I begin, I'd like to thank my parents for being here. <laughs> I mean, and my family, not just my parents, my family. <laughs> Steve Jobs once said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of others' thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out the sound of your own inner voice. Most important, have the courage to know what you truly want to become. Wait, 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 wait. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. I was five years old when my dad asked me to choose between learning the piano or the violin. My older sister already played piano, and so for that reason alone, I chose the violin. Music was a huge part of my life. I was the third grader enrolled in college orchestra, sitting at the back of the second violins. I was a big kid, and I had a lot of friends. I dreamed of one day being a violinist in the San Francisco Symphony, or opening a music school when I grew up. I was happy, and my life was all it should be. When I was 11, I made the biggest mistake of my life. You know how parents tell their kids, don't give out your personal information to strangers? I gave out my phone number, and doing so led to the most traumatic and painful experience of my life. I was raped, I got pregnant, and I suffered a miscarriage that nearly ended my life. Any dreams of purpose I had in life ceased to exist at that moment. The 11-year-old me didn't understand the seriousness of what had happened. And at first, I blamed myself. I mean, I ruined my life. And then the thought of that became such a frightening reality that I ended up telling myself that I didn't care, and in some ways refused to acknowledge that it ever happened. When something so unexpected and bad happens to you in life, it's really difficult to begin healing when you don't even know you're lost in the first place. Simply not facing the truth, however, didn't make it go away. I became a different person. I became rebellious and made choices that hurt my family. I lost trust in people and had no interest in making friends. I quit playing the violin. A couple years later, I started playing again, and I chose to with the sole purpose of being the violinist I should have been, had I never messed up. Violin became kind of like a drug. Whenever I played, I would feel happy at first, and then sad, a faint memory of the player I should have been. And yet, I couldn't stop. I remember very clearly to this day the very first competition I entered. My piece was the third movement of Brooks' Violin Concerto in G minor. I knew the other two competitors. We used to be around the same level. Now, they were much more advanced than I was, and both played beautifully. It reminded me even more of the player I should have been, but wasn't. And when I performed, it was really bad. Like, even if I tried to play as badly as I did, that day I wouldn't be able to replicate it. I still remember trying not to cry while playing and crying afterwards on stage. That day I realized two things. One, I stopped believing in myself. And two, I never really knew how to play the violin. I think I was born with some talent and played well as a kid, 
was never fearful of performing and really loved to do so. But without confidence, suddenly it was as if I had completely forgotten how to play. And the thought of that really bothered me. And since then, I have obsessed about trying to figure out and understand every little <coughs> minute technical detail when it comes to playing, so I would never mess up like that again. Ironically, this obsession has become the basis of my teaching philosophy. If I really understand how to play the violin, I can teach it to anyone. Just knowing how to do something is not the same thing as understanding how to do something. If my parents don't, um, if my students don't get it, it's my fault, not theirs. Throughout my years of teaching, I have developed several different methods. From using arm mechanics, which involves understanding arm anatomy and movement, to knowing Chinese reflexology and understanding the use of uh, body energy points, chakra. I, I have even used Naruto, I don't know if people know it in anime, um, and fencing swords as methods with my teaching. I'm blessed with very open-minded students. Over the past seven years, there has been one question that I've probably asked myself a million times. And that is, how do I begin, how do I teach someone from step one how to play the violin? And the answer I have found is that before teaching someone how to play the violin, I need to teach them how to learn first. So, how do we learn? We use our brains, right? And our brains learn by using our senses. Our senses are our windows to the outside world. So, what are our senses? Hey, Touch. You. Touch. <laughs> Smell. Smell. Sight. Sight. Hearing. Hearing. Was that all of them? And taste, yes. So, those are our five main senses. There are also two other important senses. Equilibrioception, which, are, which is our ability to balance, it's in our ears, and proprioception, which is our sense of being aware of our body parts and the strength of effort needed in movement. So, have you ever heard that blind individuals have heightened senses? There has been studies that show that the reason for this is because if one sense is lost, the areas of the brain normally devoted to handling that sensory information do not go unused. They get rewired and put to work on processing other senses. So I asked myself, what if I could rewire my brain and teach it what senses I need specific to playing violin and which senses I don't need? Would my brain then know where to focus all of its energy processing sensory information just from those needed when playing violin. And so I began to think about what senses are needed in learning violin and what purpose each of them has. This is what I came up with. And whether I'm teaching or playing, it can be a combination of any number of these senses. Sight, for reading music. Touch, for connecting with the violin and bow. Equilibrioception and proprioception go hand in hand when it comes to playing violin. And hearing when listening to instruction and violin music. Senses most definitely not needed are taste and smell. And the results have been mind blowing. The speed of how quickly my students have been improving are it's like night and day from before. I could sight read and play three pieces I used to think would have taken me three months to learn. And this discovery also led me to change the way I think about other activities. Like when you're eating, for instance. What if we can enhance our ability to taste? What senses do you need when you're tasting food? Taste, smell, touch, or texture? Uh, tasting food may never be the same. Today I run a violin studio in Palo Alto. I'm blessed with a group of wonderfully, uniquely open-minded students each of which I'm not only a teacher to, but I'm also friends with and care about deeply. I'm happiest when, I, when I'm teaching. I learn something new every day. And I also don't, I never have to wake up early. When I began teaching seven years ago, I named my teaching method TBS after my violin studio because 
none of this would have been possible without my students, without the interactions with them. And eventually, TVS became True Violin Sound Method because I have found that there's a special sound. This, it's a very different, unique, almost twinkling sound that the violin makes when the player is playing truly from their heart. And oh, side note, um, my name in Chinese is Zhen, and Zhen means true. And I know this sounds crazy, but I feel like I was born to do this. I mean, like TBS. I named it after my violin studio, I'm saying violin studio, which became True Violin Sound. And maybe one day the violin sucks if you don't try out my method. I have given many performances in the Bay Area, and I can't count the number of times people have come up to me afterwards and have said, oh, I wish I never could the violin, but I wasn't any good. I had no talent. I think it's widely accepted that some people just don't have music skills, period. End of story. I hope one day my true violin style method will change this way of thinking and inspire more people to play the violin. It's almost funny to me how in life it's so easy to trip and fall. You don't plan for it, it just happens. Nor do you have to put any effort into falling. Picking yourself back up again though is a different story. Hindsight is 2020. I felt big time in my life when I was 11. Not being able to face the truth and myself changed me into someone living a life with no meaning. Through music, I have finally been able to accept my past and be proud of who I am today. The more I got involved in music, the more I stopped rebelling, became extremely close with my family, and was able to build friendships again. And I guess what I'm trying to say with all of this is never give up getting to know yourself and stay true to who you are. What happens to you in life doesn't define you. It's the choices you make every day that does. And as one of my, one of my students, Gabby, says on her um, Instagram account, I wish I had a slide for this, but she has, within each of us is an entire universe, like Y-O-U, to be discovered. Allow you to be you, and together, let's change the world. Thanks.
Thank you.